The title of this ECE 201 lesson is The RMS Value of Periodically Varying Voltages and Currents. Now, in many cases, the voltage or current of interest in an electrical system is time varying in a periodic fashion. The waveform, that is to say the voltage plotted versus time or the current plotted versus time, repeats itself in a regular fashion. An important attribute of these periodic waveforms is the RMS value where RMS refers to the root of the mean of the square. We'll say more about that later. The reason the RMS value is important is that it allows a ready calculation of average power. We certainly don't have to look far. For example, if it's a voltage that changes periodically, here we see an electrical outlet common in the US and a plug about to be inserted into it. Once the plug is inserted, the voltage across its two terminals is the sinusoidal waveform with a period of 1 60th of a second and a frequency then of 60 cycles per second or 60 hertz. Suppose the plug connects to a resistive load. What is the power delivered to the load as a function of time? Before addressing the power issue, look at a graphical representation here of the voltage waveform with voltage on the vertical axis and time on the horizontal axis. The cycle is 16.66 milliseconds. So the waveform may be expressed in equation form as a sine wave with arg of argument 2 pi times 60 t, where t is the time in seconds. Now the units of this argument, by the way, are in radians, not degrees. And this corresponds to a frequency of 60 hertz. As for the amplitude of the sine wave, as you see here, it's 169.7 volts. And we'll say more about where that particular number comes from later in this lesson. If this voltage is across the resistive load, the power delivered by the voltage to the resistor is equal to I times V, current times voltage. Or using Ohm's law, power is equal to V squared over R. Since V is a function of time, of course, power is a function of time, note that every time V crosses the zero axis, the power goes to zero. Now in this example, unlike the voltage, the power is always positive. For a specific numerical example of R equal 100 ohms, the power reaches a peak value of about 288 watts. Note that the period associated with the power is half that of the voltage. The power waveform repeats itself 120 times per second. So by looking at power as a function of time, we can see that the peak power and the minimum power at a glance are 288 watts and zero watts. What about the average power? Well, that must be carried out mathematically. We need to calculate that. But good news is we only need to consider one period since it just repeats itself after that. For a general periodic function of time, say f of t, we may find the average by integrating the function over one period of time and then dividing that integral by the period. In our case, the function of time is power, p of t. And power as a function of time is equal to 1 over r times the voltage squared. So to find power average, we multiply 1 over r times the average of v squared or times the integral of v squared through one complete uh, cycle times the quantity 1 over the time period. Note that the quantity inside those square brackets may be said to be the average of the voltage squared or one could also say the mean of the voltage squared. Next, suppose we take the square root of this mean of the voltage squared. By convention, this quantity will be called the root of the mean squared voltage, or the RMS voltage. Now the average power can be expressed as the RMS voltage squared divided by the resistance. This is the same result as we had for DC. Power equals V squared over resistance. Please note that this is independent of the details of the time variation of the periodically varying voltage. We can still say power equals V squared over R, but now the voltage is the RMS voltage and the power is the average power. We should note that the same approach can be used with periodically varying currents. The RMS of the current is the square root of the mean of the square of the current, and if that current's flowing through a resistor, the power absorbed in the resistor is equal to the RMS current squared times the resistance. But we begin this lesson with a periodically varying voltage that was sinusoidal. Let's look now at power and RMS content, 
concepts in the context of that particular type of periodic function. We may write the average power as 1 over r times the quantity inside the square brackets, which is the integral of a function containing sine squared. And we note that the quantity inside the square bracket is the average of the voltage squared or the mean of the voltage squared. We may wish now to go to the integral tables to help us evaluate the integral of sine squared. And we are reminded that it's equal to t over 2 minus quantity 1 over 4a times the sine of 2at. In our case, that lowercase a is 2 pi over the period, capital T sub naught. Now, we can choose any value of lowercase t to start the integral. Let's choose t equal to 0. And then the limits of integration will be from time t equals 0 to time t equal to the period, capital T sub 0. And using those limits of integration, we can see that the second term inside the square bracket goes to 0. So the average power ends up to be simply equal to 1 over 2r times the peak value of that sine wave squared. Of course, it's also equal to the RMS voltage squared divided by R. So comparing those two expressions, the RMS value of a sinusoidal voltage that varies between a plus V sub A and a minus V sub A is the value of that peak value divided by the square root of 2. Going back to the picture then of the outlet from the beginning of this lesson, that's a 120 volt outlet. The 120 volts refers to the RMS value. So the corresponding peak amplitude of the sine wave is the square root of 2 times 120, or 169.7 volts. And that's where the 169.7 volts comes from. As a practical note, uh, we should say perhaps that the standard for this nominally 120 volt AC power in the U.S. and Canada calls for a range of somewhere between 114 to 126. The range is practical uh, because you have always shifting values on the distribution systems, that is shifting power demand. On the average, uh, U.S. customers, it's reported in IEEE spectrum from P. Farley, is on the order of 122.5 volts. And while we're talking about it, let's measure the RMS voltage at this outlet. We'll set it to the AC scale, which measures RMS and we see a reading of 119.4 uh, volts, very close to the 120 volts nominally that one would expect. Now, yesterday I measured the same outlet. It had 118 point something volts. I'm not surprised at that variation. It's still within range. But in both cases, the frequency is 60 hertz. That is very tightly maintained. Let's consider an example of the value of using RMS concepts for power and energy calculations. Say a 100 ohm resistive load is connected to the outlet for 10 hours. How many kilowatt hours of energy are consumed? Well, earlier in this lesson, we determined that such a situation would correspond to a power varying with time at 120 hertz and varying between zero and approximately 280 watts in the manner shown here graphically. Energy, we know, is the time integral of power. So, integrate the waveform for 36,000 seconds. How about another approach? We may use the RMS voltage to calculate the average power. That average of 144 watts may equally well be thought of as the average over one cycle or the average over 10 hours. It's just a number. There's no time dependence. So in integrating the power over time, the 144 watts comes out of the integral, and the integration becomes simply multiplying the average power times time, in this case yielding an energy consumption of 1.44 kilowatt hours. This is an example of how knowing the RMS value of a periodically varying voltage or current can greatly simplify power and energy calculations. It is the motivation behind the RMS concept. Just a word of caution, uh, saying that VRMS equals the peak voltage divided by the square root of 2 only applies to sinusoidal type periodic waves that are symmetric about the horizontal axis. That is, it would not apply to sinusoidal waves that also have a DC component that would have an offset. Likewise, it does not apply to periodic waveforms that are not sinusoidal. In those situations, one must go through the three-step process of first 
squaring the voltage, secondly finding the average by integrating over one period, and finally taking the square root. Well this concludes our lesson titled the RMS value of periodically varying voltages and currents. Thank you for watching. In summary, one aspect of what we've discussed in this lesson is the how-to part, how to find the RMS value. And there are these three steps. First, we square the voltage or current. Second, we find the average of that squared value over one cycle or over one period. And third, we take the square root, yielding the RMS value. Root means squared. And the second aspect of what we've discussed is the what for part. Why is the RMS voltage or current of interest to circuit analyzers and circuit designers? And the answer to that is that it simplifies the calculations associated with energy and with power. For resistive load, the average power is just equal to the RMS voltage squared divided by R or the RMS current squared times R. And this is regardless of the details of the time variation of the periodic function that results in a particular RMS value. If the RMS voltage is 10 volts, then the average power delivered to a 10 ohm resistive load is 100 over 10 or 10 watts, regardless of whether the waveform is sinusoidal, square wave, sawtooth, etc. The RMS concept is really critical for circuits that have periodically varying voltages and currents. Often the periodic wave function is sinusoidal in nature. This is not just in regard to the 60 Hz power delivery system, but also any periodic wave function can be expressed in terms of a Fourier expansion over sinusoidal components. So in those cases, we find it worthwhile to remember that the RMS value is equal to the peak value of the sinusoid divided by the square root of 2.